Okay, so next we're gonna do the trailer and we're just gonna start right here at the front. You're gonna look at the front of your trailer. Uh, you could call it either a header board or a bulkhead, either one. So I'm gonna check my header board here and I'm gonna make sure that it is properly mounted and secured, it's not cracked, bent, or broken, and there are no missing rivets. I'm also gonna check my trailer all down the side and just make sure there's no damage going down the side of the trailer as I continue doing my pre-trip inspection all the way down. I'm going to check the frame of my trailer all the way down as well. And I'm doing the same thing. It's all properly mounted and secured, uh, no missing rivets. I'm going to check the underside of my trailer all the way down too. Now, if you have skirts, as this one does, which helps with fuel economy, aerodynamics, you can come under here at the front and look at all the cross members and the bottom of your trailer. You're looking for holes in your floorboard. Uh, you're looking for missing, twisted, damaged cross members. And you're gonna look at as many of them as you can from right here. And you wanna check them all, all right? You can still see quite a few of them, even from up here with the skirts on. And you go to the back and you do the same thing. And you wanna check the complete underside of your trailer. So I'm gonna continue down and you wanna check your landing gear. You wanna make sure that your landing gear is properly mounted and secured. It's not cracked, bent, or broken. It's in the fully raised position. You're gonna check the shoes of your landing gear. They're not missing, they're not damaged. You would check that your handle works and that your uh, landing gear raises and lowers appropriately. And you would wanna make sure whenever you complete using your crank that you rest it in a secure location. Coming down, I'll continue looking for damage all the way down my trailer. Uh, you would be checking to make sure you have your DOT tape all the way down the side of your trailer with at least 50% coverage. It's not ripped, torn, or missing. Uh, we'll cover the light check and the reflectors and reflective tape later when we do our external light check portion. Once again, I'd be checking all my cross members and the floor of my trailer. I'm going to check the tandem release and the slide rail. So I've check, been checking my frame. I'm gonna check the slide rail and I'm going to check my tandem release. A tandem release might have a bar or it might be a button that uses air. Either way, it's properly mounted and secured. It's not cracked, bent, or broken. Since this one operates off air, it's not leaking air. The slide rail is properly mounted and secured. It's not cracked, bent, or broken. My pins are in the fully locked position. They need to be out. That means they are engaged. There's a pin here, and there's gonna be a pin farther back. You have two pins on both sides of your trailer. You need to do a complete walk around and make sure that all four pins are out on each side of your trailer. While I'm here, I'm going to go up under the trailer and I'm going to look at the brakes and I'm going to look at the suspension system. So coming under here, I'll start with my brakes. I've got my brake hoses. I'll make sure they're all properly mounted and secured, no abrasions, bulges, or cuts, and they're not leaking air. They feed into my brake chamber. My brake chamber is properly mounted and secured. It's not cracked, bent, or broken, and it's not leaking air. My slack adjuster with a push rod is properly mounted and secured. It's not cracked, bent, or broken. And whenever my wheels are chalked and my brakes are released, I can pull it by hand and it moves no more than one inch. To get a better view, you can see it on this other side right here. This is your slack adjuster with your push rod. It's on the back of your brake chamber. Sticking with my brakes, you would come in behind your tire and you'd look inside. I see that my brake drum is properly mounted and secured. It's not cracked, bent, or broken. It's free of oil and debris. The brake shoe or brake lining inside the brake drum is properly mounted and secured, not cracked, bent, or broken, and it's not worn dangerously thin. That means it has at least one quarter inch of friction material. It's also free of oil and debris. I can see that I have shock absorbers on this trailer. My shock absorber is properly mounted and secured at both ends. It's not cracked, bent, or broken, and it's not leaking. I have an airbag. My airbag is properly mounted and secured. 
at both ends on top and bottom. It has no abrasions, bulges, or cuts, and it's not leaking air. My torque arm mount is right here. This mount is properly mount secured, not cracked, bent, or broken, no missing bolts or bushings, nothing like that. And this itself is going to be a torque arm, this big piece of metal right here. It's properly mounted and secured, it's not cracked, bent, or broken. Now some trailers are going to have torque arms, some trailers are going to have springs. You've got to be able to identify whatever piece of equipment you're looking at. But it's always going to be basically the same type of thing that you're looking for on suspension items. On the inside of my tire, I'm going to check my rim. I'm going to check it in between my duals. If you have a super single, which is a, called a wide base tire, you don't need to do that. But if you have duals, you do. So the rim itself, properly mounted and secured. It's not cracked, bent, or broken on the inside or the outside or the middle. And there are no illegal welds or cracks. The inner and outer sidewall of each of my tires, I would inspect the same. All the tires are properly mounted and secured. There, there are no abrasions, bulges, or cuts, and they are not leaking air. They have the proper tread wear that is even. They have the proper tread depth of 230 seconds. They also are not leaking from the valve stem, which is properly mounted and secured, not cracked, bent, or broken. I would check my tire pressure at the valve stem with an air gauge. I'm looking for at least 100 to 110 PSI. I'm going to check and make sure I have all my lug nuts. There should be 10 of them. All are present. They're properly mounted secured. They're not cracked, bent, or broken. There are no leaking trails coming off of them or powdery residue, which would indicate they're loose. There's also no cracks around the bolt holes, which would indicate they'd been over tightened. My hub seal has no missing bolts, properly mounted secured, not cracked, bent, or broken filled to the proper manufacturer specifications and it's not leaking. These trailers right here, as you can see, have air lines. It's because they are self-inflating tires. So I'd make sure the air lines have no abrasions, bulges, or cuts, and they're not leaking air as well. I would inspect the second axle the same as I did the first axle. Another thing that you want to check whenever you're under your trailer is make sure that any of your lines whether it be air or electric, make sure they're hanging at least 18 inches off the ground and that they're not dragging along the ground while you're driving on the, on the highway. I'm gonna check my mud flap or my splash guard. I'm gonna make sure it's properly mounted and secured, not cracked, bent, or broken, no missing bolts. The flap itself is not torn or missing. And I'm gonna check my trailer doors. I'm going to make sure that my latches operate properly, the door opens and closes properly. I'm going to make sure that all of my hinges are properly mounted and secured, no missing bolts, they're not cracked or broken. Make sure I have my reflective tape up top, on the bottom, and on my DOT bumper. All the seals that go around my trailer, the rubber seals, are not missing, they're not frayed, they're not dry rotted. And I would check this side of my combination vehicle the same as I did my driver's side. 